Welcome to Unleash the Power of Age. This is a program about the uh, programs and activities at the Rose Baker Senior Center here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. I'm Jennifer Lee Levitz, your host, and uh, today we have a really special guest. She is one of the staff at Rose Baker. She is technically called the Outreach Coordinator, but I don't know anybody else in the whole place that wears as many hats as does Julie Smith. Julie, welcome. Thank you. You flatter me. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, good. Um, well, I thought it would be, a, it's about time for people to get to meet you, get to know you. If those of the, the ones who haven't already done so because they've they come to you for help. I think a lot of people uh, come to Rose Baker because they want to play bingo or because they want purple trash bags or because they need help with something. And I, I bet you catch at least 50% of the people who come in for help. Now, you may not do all the work, but you're the one who points people in directions. Well, as you know, Jennifer Lee, as a staff member of Rose Baker Senior Center yourself, we're a team. So, um, yes, often we're building networks with other agencies and pointing people, you know, if we don't know the answer, which is a lot of times we just have to say, I don't know the answer, let me help you find out. But we don't let anyone walk out the door with, without trying to follow up and figure out what they need. Sure or people who are already in the door. I've had help, Julia has helped me <laughs> on several occasions um, personally. So um, let's start. First, I would like to get to know you a little bit. You've been here, you've been at Rose Baker for almost two years. Mm -hmm. And I was reading about you, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. Um, so if you meet someone and, and the person says, hi, I'm so-and-so, I do this and this and this. So somebody meets you, Julie Smith, what do you say? Well, hi, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm generally not one to go, um, you know, in my role at Rose Baker, uh, I do a lot more listening than I do talking, I so know. this is a little bit unnatural for me. I you probably know. know that because you know me. That's but why our I'm trying. viewers out there they don't necessarily know that That's this is unnatural I'm, for me. I know. That's so, why I'm trying to get you to do it. Yes. Yeah. So but I came to Rose Baker um, largely because I really wanted to work in Gloucester. Um, I have worked in Gloucester before. Uh, I was the director of athletics at the Gloucester Public School System for a couple years. Um, prior to that, I worked for adult foster care of the North Shore as a care manager. Um, I've lived in Gloucester over 20 years. I like to say I married into Gloucester. Uh, my hometown is Durham, New Hampshire. Uh, grew up in the shadows of the University of New Hampshire where my dad taught. Um, oh. My mom was actually number one in her class in biology at the University of Michigan. But back in the 50s, uh, women weren't necessarily encouraged to go on and get their PhDs in uh, biological sciences. So. My mom actually shipped out from the Upper Peninsula of where she's from, and she came to Durham, New Hampshire, got her master's degree. In the process of getting her PhD, she was tutoring this young undergrad, my dad, and got waylaid. Three kids later, here I am. Um, so I made my way to Gloucester uh, because of my husband, uh, Ben Smith, who is um, a Smith in the long line of Smiths in Gloucester running back to, say, the rum running days. Uh, I think that's how they got to be fast sailors. They learned how to first get fish down from Nova Scotia pretty quickly in their sailboats. And then second, um, you know, it turned into maybe some sordid business for a while. No. But my father's father, um, Benjamin A. Smith II, was the mayor of Gloucester. Um, that was back when the person who got the most votes for city council was named the mayor. He didn't run for mayor. Um, and my husband, Ben Smith the uh, third, he was a member of the, he is a member of the Gloucester High School Athletics Hall of Fame. Uh, he went on to Harvard and played hockey and he's coached uh, six Olympic hockey teams, both on the men's and the women's side. Um, now he currently coaches the O'Malley Shamrocks. Go Shamrocks! 
Um, that's O'Malley School. Has a, as many people know, maybe some of you don't, O'Malley has a hockey rink, well, right next to it, sure. which is like ideal. I come from a hockey tradition growing up on a pond um, in New Hampshire and, uh, you know, playing hockey on a pond, that is. And the O'Malley school kids are so lucky, they get to go to practice at like 6.15 in the morning till 7.15, quick eat a breakfast and go off to school. So when I was the director of athletics, the O'Malley school teachers would tell me that in the winter time, uh, the hockey players were often the most alert you know, when that bell rang at 7.50 for them to get started studying. Sure, they're already there. I want to go back. <laughs> three children. Where are you in the order? Third of three. I'm the baby by a lot. You're the baby by a lot. I am. And boys and girls? Um, girl, boy, girl. My nickname was Kid because I was so <laughs> much younger than my siblings. I think it's actually how I got to be good at hockey. Um, my brother is five years older than me, and I grew up playing on the pond uh, with his friends and you know so that was not only people five years older than me or more but boys males and st yeah <laughs> so uh, yeah I, I went to Harvard University myself I played um, soccer and hockey there and I played on the first ever women's international ice hockey team for Team USA in 1990 the world tournament in Ottawa Ontario Wow Phew. Phew. that's a lot that's a lot Okay, so you've been in Gloucester for about 20 years, and you worked with kids, and now you're working with seniors. But not just seniors, I bet you work with whole families a lot of the time. A lot of caregivers. Caregivers aren't always seniors. Also, um, you know, Rose, Rose Baker, we are open, you know, we, we work with a lot of people. We work with, I think technically the definition is 50 and over if you have some sort of ident um, disability or that you don't need to divulge. Um, or you know 60 and over but many I talked to a lot of caregivers who are helping out a family member sure and um, you know so yeah and you know uh, hey age it's a number right you know if you're born you're hopefully you're aging right it beats the alternative right so um, I in fact like to refer to us as Rose Baker Center um, rather than Rose senior Baker Center. Senior Center. That exactly. includes the people who may exactly. not be seniors. Exactly. The other thing, the other reason I might point that out, there's a great um, agency every, you know, most people know in town. It's the uh, Aging Services Access Point for our region, and it's called Senior Care Incorporated. People often come to us for help with things like signing up for Medicare, signing up for Social Security. Um, is that something you work on? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so, you know, Shine program is a great place. I brought my little prop. I don't know if they're gonna get mad at me for my prop here. I'm not wearing it. I'm just, I'm just showing it to the, to the viewers out there. Um, the Shine program in Massachusetts, Shine, means serving health insurance needs of everyone on or eligible for Medicare. So you can be eligible for Medicare because you're 65 or just about 65. You can also be eligible for Medicare because um, you have been on Social Security disability insurance for over two years and then you automatically um, get Medicare. Another reason why I like Rose Baker Center because we're working with people who are on Medicare and they're in their 30s. Um, so. Uh, another reason I think uh, Rose Baker Center sounds, has a good ring to it. But um, Rose Baker Center has four SHINE counselors. Um, I happen to be the one that also is outreach coordinator. Um, so I'm there uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 8.30 to 4. We have, um, we're very lucky that we have my predecessor, Lydia Bertolino, um, who has been doing SHINE counseling for over 30 years. She knows uh, backwards and forwards. Uh, so she volunteers her time, you know, which is incredible because if I'm saying it in that way because it can get pretty complicated pretty fast. I don't know how many times I've heard someone say, oh, I just have a quick question. And that quick question. <laughs> There's no such thing. That quick question is, you know, it's, it's an hour long answer. And, it, and it's, um, you know, I have to say one of the things that's troublesome to me is that Medicare can be in some ways unnecessarily bureaucratic or um, complicated. Um, 
there's no such thing as a quick question, you know. Do you and mean signing up for it or in general? There are a lot of, the way I've come to think about it is Medicare is individualized, okay? Yeah. So everybody in the United States of America um, will very likely eventually be on Medicare. It is really tailored to every individual in the United States of America. I, I don't know the number of times I've had, say, spouses, partners come in and say, um, you know, oh, um, my partner has this insurance, so I, I want it too. I, that always is a huge red flag for sure. me. Sure. Because it is so individualized. It really depends, and this gets to a question you had asked me earlier, like how do you prepare for a Shine, a Medicare appointment? You know, number one, you bring in the medications that you're taking down to whether it's a tablet or a capsule or, a, you know, whether it's a aerosol or a nebulizer. It really matters. I know, I know. You know what's so funny? One of the things that's very funny about this is that people sit at home and watch a television commercial that says, you could have this and you could have that and you could have, re you could have that much money back in your pocket and you can have free this and that and other. And it has nothing to do with reality. Um, what what Julie and the others do at Rose Baker is to get you what you really need um, for your situation. And what Shine would say about that, the Shine program out of age span, we're under there. Uh, so just like senior care is to our region here, the aging services access point, age span is to the Lawrence region. Um, and our Shine program runs through age span. It's unbiased counseling. So we do not, we're not insurance right. brokers. <laughs> we right. do not make decisions right. for you. We help lay it out. Um, but I wanted to get in there. In addition to Lydia Bertolino, 30 years shine. You must say the other volunteer. Well, we have our former mayor, um, Safatia Romeo Taken, yep. okay, who speaks Sicilian. She speaks Italian. She speaks English. I don't know whatever else she speaks. She's, um, <laughs> and she has a huge amount of experience, you know, over 30. She also is a certified applications counselor, which is a whole different uh, level of certification. Um, we also have Mirta Ulivi, who's bilingual in Spanish and English. Um, she's Argentinian-American. So those are our three, I mean, our three volunteers are pretty, it's a, it, we got a pretty good um, right. crew right. here. Yeah, right. uh, going with the, so, and, and I find it's been great for me as the newbie um, to, I have people to ask right next door in addition to the parent office up in Lawrence. Sure. No, I know that there are a lot of people who um, I don't know how to put this. They, you don't know where to go to start. So you call up and ask for Julie Smith. You call up and say, I need to sign up for Medicare. You'll probably get Julie Smith. <laughs> you call up, what if somebody wants food stamps? Is that call. something you do? Uh, what I would do is I would um, talk to them about uh, signing a, a permission to share information form. I have them, in fact, I saw Leah Briere, uh, who is in client services at the Open Door, Emerson <coughs> Ave. Um, so Leah Briere and I were pre presenting to the residents of Curtis Clark building, the old armory building. Oh, um, yes, yes, We go yes, around yes. to the senior housing sites. And you basically do that once, too? Well, that's part of the outreach, part of, you know, okay. that word outreach, okay, it, okay, it means okay, okay. getting out there. Um, so yeah, so today we were at Curtis Clark building. And um, in answer to your question, Leah Briere has a portal to the Department of Transitional Assistance and with my PSI that I have you sign in my office and I scan it over to Leah, she can help you. Um, it, it's helpful if you go and you sit with her, and, um, but she will have access to information to um, see pretty quickly whether or not you qualify. What I hear from Leah and from um, her assistant, Jill Brown, at the Open Door Client Services, there are more people out there that qualify for, I would call it SNAP benefits, um, supplemental, supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program. The old food stamps is SNAP benefits or EBT cards. Um, there are so many more people that qualify that have this feeling of, oh, I don't wanna take it away from someone else. Oh, I don't, you know, oh, not me. And they may not realize that they're not taking something from someone else. That money will go back to the government um, but I think there's, it's something I run into in the job at Rose Baker a lot. People who are really staunchly independent 
and aren't used to asking for help. And if you're eligible for services, I really recommend you tap into what you can get. I, I would agree with that. I think, you know, I think that actually there's something really positive about being independent. Um, but I was just talking actually with Gail Campbell. She's the resident services coordinator. Um, and she was, uh, she brought some of the snacks for our meeting at Curtis Clark. And uh, Leah Briere from Open Door and I were saying, we're trying to help her with her bags to bring them back to her car. And she started off saying, you know, oh no, I got it. And then she's like, wait a minute, you know what? I'm gonna say yes, because there's gonna be a time when I don't have anyone around to help me and, uh, and I'll need it. Sure. So I'm gonna, so, you know, it's more, it's just more fun too. You know, we helped her, we talked on, you know, talked as we're walking out the door. Um, if someone came to you, you're evaluating them and they say, oh no, I don't, I don't do any of that. I don't do any of that. I can, I can take care of myself and clearly they could use some help. What would you say to someone who is being independent well, and first really all, could use the help? First of all, it's not for me to decide whether not or not to they decide, could use some help. Just but to I can think of a concrete them. example of a man I met with yesterday. Okay. Okay, and I met with him yesterday for maybe the third time, and it was about a variety of topics. You know, okay. in my role as outreach coordinator, okay. um, it started off with this Medicare counseling, but then it turned into a question about SNAP benefits and um, how to make your dollar go. We started talking about the Affordable Connectivity Program. Um, many, we've helped many people reduce their internet bill by $30 through this program. And come see us, we can help you out with that. It's not too difficult an application. Anyway, back to this gentleman yesterday. You know, it was about the third meeting that I brought up the idea. And the other thing is um, his partner had called me um, separately and um, I think the partner was worried that I was just the shine counselor and this gentleman was only, um, you know, he didn't really, the person was from out of town, they didn't realize that I'm also the outreach coordinator involved with all these other agencies. And so I think, you know, enlisting the support of a confidant, a partner, um, someone in the household or a relative, um, I think that helped. And I noticed kind of at my third kick at the can here with this person, um, he, he said, okay, yeah, I'm gonna look into it. So sometimes, um, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day. You just kind of suggest it and maybe bring it up again and maybe talk to a family member who might suggest it. And just persistent. I, I, think, um, I think that's one of my qualities. I'm persistent yeah. and I keep coming back. You do. I, I would also <laughs> like to say what you said. I'm going to reiterate this one. That you, um, you're not making any judgments about this and you're calling the person independent. And I don't even know exactly how, how I want to say this, but that you persisted and you got them to come around and look at it. There were many years that I could have used more help than I took. And I finally did because I had absolutely no choice. Um, to switch gears just a bit on this, but I think it is loosely related. Go ahead. Um, I cared for a couple years, I cared for a family member who had dementia. She's no longer with us. Yes. But um, I learned, uh, and I did the Savvy Caregiver Training course, which is a senior care program, by the way. Um, I learned from Teepa Snow, T-E-E-P-A, Snow. She's, you can, uh, teepasnow.com is where you can get her. She's a uh, highly skilled expert at um, working with people with all the dementias under that big dementia umbrella. There are many. Um, and one thing I learned is often it was, it was not what I was saying, it was how I was saying it, you know? And often I, I needed to just let go and, um, and follow the person's lead at that moment and then come back around, you know, and, and kind of learn different ways of getting things accomplished. Sure. Um, it was, you know, if it weren't so heartbreaking, it, it's fascinating. And I have to say in my job now, that's where I get triggered the most, I know personally, is um, working with caregivers. Working, you know what's um, fascinating to me is the number of people who will come in and um, I can sort of recognize a similarity. And by the way, 
Um, no two individuals are alike. No two dementias are alike. So everybody's different, right? But I can, um, I can think of when uh, the person I was caring for had some awareness of memory loss. And that was almost the most heartbreaking, hardest time. Once, once it, uh, it was further along, it, wasn't, it was heartbreaking in a different way, but not so painful. Um, the person wasn't, wasn't as aware. It's amazing the, um, the bravery I see from especially the person themselves experiencing memory loss, um, saying, you know, hey, Julie, I don't always remember. Um, can you help me out with this or that? Uh, it, it's inspiring to me and it makes me think as I continue to age, which I hope I do, um, I hope I will can know how to ask for help like that. And by the way, you know, we, we do try to work um, by taking appointments, especially with the SHINE program and we have to dive into the computer and it helps to have privacy. But the people that we work with who have some sort of memory loss or cognitive difficulties, anytime they drop in, we pretend there was an appointment um, and we, you know, so obviously we, we, we have to have sort of flexibility within a framework because sure. we want to um, make sure we're accommodating sure. everyone. Sure, sure. There was um, another person, I know what you mentioned, the word caregiver. Um, do we have help for caregivers? Sure, I mean, again, it's tapping into networks. Um, you know, again, no two caregivers are alike. No two caregivers are at the same stage of, of help. You know, it, it's, I, I, um, my personal view is the most, the people who have the most difficult time giving care are the partner or spouses. You know, when it's a child or when it's a relative, it's a little bit, and that's what it was in my situation of sure, within my sure, family. Sure. It wasn't a spouse, you know. Um, so I think, those can be the people who may still have some level of denial that this is really happening. Oh, sure. And I can't really speak for what they're going through, not having gone through it. But um, they can, so my bottom line is that there's all kinds of different resources for caregivers. Um, you know, we tap into networks through Senior Care again, the Options Counseling Program. Um, you know, the, there's the Dementia Friendly Cape Ann. Exactly. Um, you know, so, and then, we today, right now, I think as we speak, maybe it's over now. Um, we had a memory cafe running down at Rose Baker Senior Center. This is um, one of those things where um, people. Part of the memory cafe was, um, you know, showing clips, uh, videos of of thing, you know, segments of comedies and music from the past, from say 50, 60 years ago. And then the participants were going to, you know, do some drawings and make some notes and have something to take home to kind of, you know, as a reminder of the event. Well, um, people who may have difficulty remembering things might not be right on top of signing up for this, you know. And that's where we reach out to caregivers um, as, you know, encouraging them to sign up the person that they're giving care to for events like that. Okay. Uh, we, we didn't start off with, but let's catch up and just make a mention of the survey. Yes. Are we still doing a survey? Well, um, I'm, I am gradually, I have two more housing authorities to visit um, to pick up because, you know, what we did is we made a, um, you know, visuals, you know, the white one you got in your newsletter, um, your Coastline News newsletter. If you were in a housing, uh, one of the senior sites, the Gloucester Housing Authority senior sites, it was a pink one because we wanted to try to get a sense um, on the feedback where who, who it was coming from. I, I just have to give a shout out to Susan Orleans, the intern who really helped devise this oh, newsletter. Oh, she was here for quite a while. Salem State uh, University student now is going on to her master's degree. Wow. And she's working at Senior Care now. Um, she's an intern there for her master's program. But anyway, the purpose of this survey was number one, to get feedback. And yes, we're still taking it um, next couple months. And number two, we just wanted people to be able to read it and see the kinds of things that we're doing. And we will do more. We're here to respond to the community. We're not a dog and pony show. We need to hear from you what you need. Okay. So um, what would you say if I said it might be a good thing for people to just call and make an appointment and come in and see you? Let's for, sort of for an evaluation for just to see where they're at and 
if there's anything Rose Baker can do for them or whether they need, they might not need anything. Um, One word, yes, but, you do know, it. Do it, please. But you never know. You know how that there's, there are always these jokes on, um, I refer a lot to television because I watch a lot, always <laughs> have. There are people who go in the story, they go to a lawyer and they say, I want to ask a question for my friend. And they're, they're really, it's really about themselves. However, it could be that they come in to ask about themselves and they could find out something for their friend. Yes, I hope so. You, you never know what information is going to be valuable and f valuable to whom. So, um, so I'm going to call up them and say, I, hi, I want to speak with Julie Smith. And they put me on to you. And um, Julie, I'm new in town, and I, um, I might need help finding a doctor. Is that anything you could help me with? I would say yes, come on in, let's talk, let's talk about all of it. Um, I would, you know, I might ask a few questions, like are they someone who already has internet access and a computer at home, and you know, I might sit and search for them if they didn't feel like coming in. Sometimes people don't have an easy time coming in. So I do Zoom appointments for people like that, or okay. I'll just talk to them on the phone. Yeah. Obviously, I love it when they come in. Yeah, but there are people who don't who say, oh, I can't do it on the internet. Luckily, the computer I have at my desk, you've seen it, it swings. So I'll sit here, you sit there, and we put it right between us, and you, we talk and bring things up. and. That's so I don't have to, I, wouldn't ha I don't have to do it myself. You'll you know, do the internet for me. Absolutely. Wow. I would just say, like I mentioned to Jennifer Lee before we went on air, the people I'm most worried about are the ones I don't see. I'm worried that you might be isolated. I'm worried that you haven't, perhaps you lost a spouse or a loved one and you're a little bit, um, you know, it's hard and it's not easy to get out or you live in a geographically isolated area, or you have some disability that doesn't allow, or you speak a language, that, or you're worried that it's only white people at the Rose Baker Center, um, or they're only speaking English. You know, one of the great things about Natalia Moshe, our new activities and volunteer coordinator, she speaks Portuguese fluently, and she's, um, she's also proficient in Spanish. Um, like I said, we've got other people who speak different language. And we also just try, yo estoy aprendiendo español. I'm trying to learn Spanish. Um, shout out to Louisa Cleves in Lanesville giving me Spanish lessons. But anyway, we're open to you. Um, give us a call. Uh, you know, if you don't need us, fine. Um, but we are here. We're here to meet the needs of this community, this great community of Gloucester. Please call or come by or something. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Julie. This has been fun. Good job. <laughs>